Let me share with you my go-to base routine, guys. I feel like I've nailed it. No gatekeeping. I'm gonna share everything with you. My tips, my tricks, my techniques from the products to the brushes and tools and the way that I like to apply stuff. I'm gonna tell you everything. There are little ways that I go about doing it um, and how I do make things look so even though I use a lot of shit. <laughs> I have oily skin, so, you know, powders are essential for me. I talk about it from a perspective of someone with that skin type, but I do try my best to give you alternatives, different ways to do it if you do have a different skin type to me. Um, when I want my makeup to stay on, on, this is what I do. Just the best, like, full coverage routine. It needed its own video in, like, in-depth discussion. So let's do this, let's talk through it. My favorite and bestest and just my go-to base routine. Let's go. First thing always is making sure that your skin is prepped properly with skincare. All that I like to make sure is that my skin is nice and moisturized and juicy. Okay, I have oily skin going in with like 20 different skincare products before makeup is just not necessary. Cleansing and moisturizing are the two main steps. If you have drier skin, obviously going with more like richer and yummier <laughs> products. Me, I went in with the Skin by Kim moisturizer and then a hyaluronic acid uh, like serum because that's like a really lightweight but hydrating formula to be able to use. It's more like a gel consistency almost, not like an oily serum or anything like that. I avoid that type of thing underneath my makeup personally, but you do you. I take a lip balm as well, by the way. This is the NARS Orgasm uh, lip mask. It's, oh my God, I could eat it. It's that good. Just making sure everything's hydrated because your makeup sits on top of your skin, right? Your skin, like how you look after your skin under Underneath is gonna determine how your makeup will sit, along with other things, but that's like the main starting point. Cool? Cool. Priming the skin now, I personally like to go in with two different types of primers. One that's sort of sticky and gripping, and the other that's gonna go in the T-zone to help with pores. They're the two steps I feel like my skin needs to look its best. So, the first one I use is the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. They're actually both from e.l.f. to be fair, but this one's great. This is like the Milk Hydro Grip Makeup Dupe. I'm sure you all know by now. I basically go in with like a pump of that, guys. Don't go in with too much because this type of primer, if you do apply too much, as you're applying your foundation, you'll notice that it will start to sort of like peel up and kind of bead off. So you just need like a nice thin layer. I basically kind of put that everywhere to be fair. You'll notice this texture will start to go tacky. When you feel that, you're good to stop and move on. Next primer the e.l.f. Uh, Poreless Putty Primer. The original one is my favorite. They have a bunch these days though, like blemish fighting, more of a glowy one, whatever you feel like will work with your skin best. Cause at the end of the day, guys, like listen, you know your skin best. Like I have oily skin, I always have. I know makeup for oily skin at the back of my fucking hands. <laughs> Whereas someone with dry skin, I can recommend things, but it's not gonna be as in depth or as sort of like personal as if I was to have experienced that myself. Does that make sense? I'll try to advise, but like just bear that in mind when I'm talking about certain products. Nice scoop anyway, guys. I'm quite sort of like generous with this right in the T-zone. I say that, that's probably a bit too much, but anyway, we move. <laughs> I start by melting it into the skin like this and it will start to, as you can see, thin out. When I sort of like, it goes a bit clear like this, that's when I start to sort of press it into the pores. Really making sure that that product is sort of going into the skin. I know that sounds pretty disgusting, but that way I'm getting the best out of this product. You know, it's not just sitting on the surface. I do want it to, to help fill in my pores as much as possible. Now, this next step is actually really important for me. If you have dry skin, I would skip this. I personally like to go in now with a thin layer of powder. This is gonna help control the oils underneath my makeup. I also find that it helps to set the primer, therefore almost like creating a barrier. Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Powder. Reason I like this is because this is actually quite like a softening, blurring powder. Underneath, as you can imagine, Imagine. So good. Because I want a light layer, I'm gonna go in with like a nice soft fluffy brush and then just tap that right here. And I mean, immediately you see it starts to take away the shine. Make sure that it is like a nice sort of thin layer of powder because obviously you don't want like a thick layer on your skin. And then when you put your foundation on, it's like a little bit crazy, you know? I feel like that's good. Oh, another tip that I have. Now this is gonna be depending on how you find your foundation sits on your skin. If you find that your foundation is starting to break up, say on your nose, that's quite a common area, your chin, your forehead. A little tip that I have is grab your P. Louise base. This product is made to hold product on top of it perfectly. So when you apply this to the eyes, then you apply eyeshadow, everything is meant to blend seamlessly on top. See where I'm going with this? If you was to apply this on those areas that struggle to, to grip foundation, maybe you're gonna have no problem. Cause this is what this is made for. Just a thin layer, apply it over the top, and then hopefully you'll notice a big difference in the way that your foundation sits. That's just like a, a little tip. My number one thing that I always, always do before I do my foundation 
if I have, like I do now, any blemishes, scarring, cover them before foundation. This is gonna avoid you applying extra foundation, anything caking up. You're gonna apply what you need because the concealer does the covering because at the end of the day, that is what concealer's for. So use it for that. <laughs> now Soft Matte Complete Coverage Concealer in Custard. This is the best, I don't wanna hear it. <laughs> Little flat concealer brush. This is the Morphe V103. This concealer isn't as light as something I'd use under my eye. If anything, it's a little bit closer to my skin tone. It's gonna blend in with my foundation and the skin tone, which is why I, I tend to do that. If you have like a stubborn blemish or anything like that, just let this sit for like 30 seconds to a minute, dry down and get a little bit more coverage. I mean, this is sick anyway, but I mean, the foundation I use is pretty full coverage, but you'll notice everything now is just gonna be completely gone, which is what we want because they don't deserve to be in my face. Go away. Also, don't blend it. Leave it like this, trust me. Right, where is my foundation? Now you guys know I have loads of foundations that I love, but the one at the moment, if I can get it out, that has my heart and I have not put down the Be Perfect Chroma Cover. If you're not into full coverage, just put it down. But over here, it's my favorite thing. This foundation is one of the most full coverage foundations I have that just looks unreal on the skin. The formula, the way that they've made this, Wow, the formula, like it's not even like matte. It's just, it looks like perfected skin. It's just the craziest thing you'll see. So this is in shade N5. I like to start with the brush, right? This is the Morphe V108. Yeah, small but dense and it really kind of packs it on and then we will take a sponge just to diffuse everything out at the end. What a lovely sound. <laughs> Watch the magic happen. Obviously this is darker than my skin tone because I currently have no tan on my face but I wanna match my neck. Yeah, yeah. It's just beautiful. And can you guys see, let me zoom you in. Can we see how it's starting to sit in this area here? How the way it's sitting here is the way that it's sitting here. Small tapping motions, press it into the skin. I tend to not do this motion. The only place I do is down around the jawline just to make sure it's buffed into my neck. It doesn't cling to anything. It just like marries with the skin so perfectly. See what I mean about the breakouts as well, how they've just completely gone. Obviously, we can't get rid of texture. We can help texture, we can minimize it, but we can't get rid of it, right? But we can, uh, we can get rid of like color, discoloration. The reason as well why I like using a smaller brush is, I mean, you can see how easy I can get like in between the brows, around the brows, just has a little bit more control. Because um, the sponge I use is huge. It's great, but it's big. <laughs> Before I zoom you out, can you see the way that it's sitting on the skin? It's a great foundation, but everything we have applied already is what's really kind of maximizing the appearance of this on the skin. Does that make sense? The combination is just, yeah, it's just beautiful. Another thing, by the way, you probably could tell, I only take the foundation up to here. I don't go right underneath the eye. Allow your concealer to do the concealing, right? I feel like it's just unnecessary to apply extra products, like extra foundation under here when I'm gonna be con like concealing with concealer, you know? Leave that that blank and then you won't get as much creasing or as much product build up. This is the part that I take my sponge. So it's already damp. It's the Coco Cosmetics by Chloe Marshmallow Sponge, my favorite. This is the best sponge and I don't wanna hear it. That's it, that's it. Full stopped, lines drawn, babe. <laughs> so soft and like so squishy, but the most important thing is the way that it blends the makeup on the skin. It's beautiful. Your tools are really important, guys, when it comes to your makeup as well as the products. Milk Hydro Grip Setting Spray. This is the one I'm using at the moment. Just a little. The setting spray's on there, and what I'm gonna do is bounce that setting spray into this foundation. This is like another layer, almost. It's almost like um, I sandwich the setting spray between the layers of my skin. Basically means my foundation is not going anywhere. I mean, sometimes I'll even spray the setting spray like after the primers. Nice thin layer, let that dry down, and then I'll go in with my foundation. Um, it just kind of depends, but. The sponge now is also picking up any excess product on the skin that we don't need and just affecting everything as we Go. Concealer is of course gonna be my HMB Cosmetics Soft Focus Airbrush Concealer. Now I'm gonna be using shade uh, 2.5W and I'm also gonna go in with um, zero, purely because I like a bright under eye. So I'm gonna start with the darker shade, so the 2.5W. This is my concealer placement, okay? So down the sides of my nose, start to bring it onto here, back in, and we're gonna go up here. When we blend it out, we're gonna keep in this motion. So you're gonna get the lift and then down the sides of the nose, it's gonna help with my um, my nose contour. A little bit down the middle and then there. 
this lighter shade is only gonna go, oh, did I drop some? Just right here in the center. And then I might put a little bit here just to sort of like even it out. And down the sides of the nose. So just like in small little sections. I'm gonna leave it for about 30 seconds just to dry down a bit. But sometimes I use a brush to blend this out. Sometimes I use a sponge. Whatever I'm feeling, I'm gonna use my baby marshmallow sponge. Guys, look at the difference. <laughs> Again, by Coco Cosmetics by Chloe. Tap, no. No swiping, swiping, no swiping to blend that in. And I'm trying to stay like in the same place. So I like tap, 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 tap. And then once it starts to blend, you can kind of just blur out those edges. See how I'm bouncing the sponge in the same area? So the more obviously you bounce, the more you're gonna buff out the product. I'm trying like not to drag it further than the under eye. All the way back here, sort of by the end of the brow is, right up to the temple. It's almost like I take it right in the inner corner as well, like into the crease. Then what you could always do is take the brush that you used um, for your foundation and just tap the edge just to make sure that's smooth and um, seamless. Doing the reverse contour down the nose, guys. Honestly, if you struggle with contouring your nose, reverse contouring is always a good shout. So you're using the highlight part, which is easier than the actual like contour part. You'll see when I start to contour my nose, how easy it will start to be purely because like I've done that. Cream bronzer. Of course, this is my favorite. What do we expect? Primark My Perfect Color Foundation and Contour Stick in Chai. This is my absolute favorite. Now I know this is really, really hard to get hold of. Uh, Primark. <laughs> Just some alternatives. I do really love the pink honey, um, bronzer, the cream bronzer. Comes in a pot that you can just pop your brush and swirl it around and apply it. Super, super pigmented though, so just be careful if you do use that. Another one I like should actually be here. It's by NARS. Yeah, here we go. It's the bronzing cream. This is in Laguna 2. Let me open it just to show you. That's what that looks like. It's a little bit more cool toned. Blends beautifully on the skin though, and it's really beginner friendly. I actually go straight in with the stick. I feel like I'm so used to using this product now. I know how much I can use. I know how it works. It's like second nature to me at this point. But if you are either scared or new to cream bronzer and you just wanna kind of step in like with your toes, take the actual stick, grab your brush. This brush, by the way, is the, I always get questions on this. It's the F23 from Sigma, the soft angled contour. It's the best for cream contour. Go in like this, pick up the product, and then you can just stamp it down and build it up like that. I mean, you can see already how soft that is. And then it gives you time to build and get it as intense as you like. This kind of stick though, I find applying it to the skin doesn't make it go patchy. It doesn't like affect anything like that. The formula of this is great. So you, I just, go in, but that's an option. I stay in the same place and I tap like this and then I use like the shape of the brush. So you see how it's like angled further up here, but lower down here. I'm gonna use that to my advantage. I'll use the higher end to bring it up towards my temples and create that sideways triangle shape. Like let the brush do the work for you guys. Stay here and then when it starts to diffuse out, just like that. Real quick, let me talk about placement. So I like to put some on my forehead to shorten my forehead. If that's not something you wanna do, skip that step. Um, I obviously put it on my cheekbones, just add like a bit of shape and a bit of color. The jawline I do obviously to mimic a shadow to get rid of the double chin. <laughs> the reason though that I place some here onto my chin is when I blend this out, you'll see I'm shortening my chin. Do you see that? See how my chin doesn't look as long? That's the shape I like my face to be. Remember, every face shape is different and you're gonna wanna create a different shape or whatever you, however you want your skin to look is how you want it to look. There's no right or wrong. This is the shape that I choose because I do like to shorten things. Remember, this cream bronzer is either gonna shorten things if it's at the top or the bottom, if it's at the sides, it's gonna sink things in. The shape that I do might not be the shape that works for you. So just bear that in mind and just think about what you wanna achieve from the makeup products that you're using. Oh, and another thing I like to do, another little tip that I have. See where my brow ends? I follow that up here, just on the temples. Without moving my brush, I'm just gonna bounce up and down, up and down, up and down. The illusions on my sunken in my temples. So I feel like where I've pulled that concealer up, it's just emphasized that in, like even more, and I feel like my face looks even more lifted. All about mapping and creating shadows and different shapes. There's so much you can do with makeup. That's the art and the fun of it, guys. All I can do is show you what I do with my makeup, tell you why I do that so you know if that would be best 
for you. Collection Last Imperfection Concealer. This is in shade Honey, which is number 15. Now, we've got a nice small applicator, which is perfect for the nose. Color is perfect. The formula is really nice. This for nose contour is just the best. It will start to dry down, which I feel like for nose contour is exactly what you want because it means that you can keep the lines in place because obviously the more defined they are, the more definition you're gonna get on your nose, um, but it will blend. Doesn't have to be perfect because we are gonna blend. I'm gonna use this brush here. This is actually from Pretty Little Thing. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is, but it's just like a small, flat, fluffy, like shader brush almost. Again, I feel like I'm repeating myself. Sorry guys, but where you poo, where you poo, where you poo, where you put your nose contour like lines will depend on the shape. So I like to lift the tip and I almost bring it round and create like a little like half circle on the tip of my nose. Do you see that? How I'm creating like a U shape? That's lifted the tip of my nose now. I like it to look like a little piggy nose. And then I like my nose to look like shortened and skinnier, right? The closer the lines are together, the skinnier your nose is gonna look. If you're not too fussed about your nose looking shorter, these lines, what you wanna do is tap them in and bring them up and into like the underneath of the brow. Everything will look really seamless then and, and part of the same like face. But because I like my nose to look shorter, I stop here. So just before I get to the tip, and I start probably about here. And I kind of swipe really gently and like tap. Don't be afraid to use your fingers because they are your God-given tools. Use them. I kind of switch between tapping with this and then using my finger. See the shape I've like created now? And obviously where we've got concealer down the sides of the nose, which don't be afraid by the way to go back in with the sponge you use for your concealer or the brush and just tap down the sides. This has got excess product on, not adding any more. I'm just using it to clean up the lines. Looks intense, but just trust the process. <laughs> Take your finger and just diffuse the lines together. See how easy that was to do that nose contour? Done. Moving on to cream blush. So you will notice that I like to use kind of like a cream product for every like powder product I would use in light layers. I find that it helps my powder products last longer. A lot of powder products will diffuse off the skin and you'll notice possibly after like a few hours, um, it will wear off, especially if you don't have like that cream base underneath. That's what I find anyway. If you do struggle with that, like longevity of your makeup and keeping products on, Maybe just start to like gently layer things up. Cream can make things look more intense. Hence why when, for example, you use a P. Louise base and you leave it wet and you go in with a powder, it just makes it more intense and it gives it something to stick to. It's the same concept for your face. Two products I love, either my Made by Mitchell Blush in Sweet Cheeks or my P. Louise base in Blow In Bubbles. Now, both of them are great because they're more of like a matte formula, but they just blend like butter, okay? I am gonna use the P. Louise base. These. Oh my God, these for cream, like products like cream bronzer, cream blush, whatever. Please don't sleep on them. So good. And where it's a base, you're literally asking for your makeup to stay on your face. Did I say the color? This is blowing bubbles. I like blowing bubbles or winter rose. Not shy with cream blush because blush, blush is like the soul of the face. Right, to pick up that product. Definitely recommend this rather than going straight in with this product because it's easy to put too much on. <laughs> Trust me, these are pigmented. Taking it on a Made by Mitchell MF2 brush, by the way. Make sure those bristles are coated evenly. And then I like to hit just like on the cheekbones right here. Sometimes I like to mix in this as well, by the way. Um, this is the P. Louise, the cheek of it. Uh, liquid blush. This is in Legally Pink. My, um, it's like a squeezy, almost like the Maybelline, you know that Maybelline concealer? Mine actually broke off, so I've just got this little, <laughs> it's like a little bowling ball. See that? You just squeeze and then the product comes out. As you can see, it's a really light pink. This is almost too light for me to use on my own because obviously I, I do fake tan. Mixed in with like a shade like this to kind of create a baby pink tone is just the best thing like ever. I'm gonna add some in actually. See how that's just made that like a little bit more like a baby, a baby pink. I love a baby pink on the cheeks. Whatever's on the brush, I just hit like the, the top of the nose, like in between, like underneath the eyebrows, kind of like up here. Now we're gonna blend it. I like to hit the corner of the eye and underneath. The more you tap, the more it's gonna blend. And then whatever's left, I'll sort of take onto the apple of the cheek. Back in with the brush that I use for my cream contour, just to make sure the two are blended together and they're not like, in layers. You know, listen, as much as I like Neapolitan ice cream, I don't want it on my face. Like, you'll look and you'll be like, Jordan, you're putting way too much, right? And for some people, this will be too much, but by the time you powder, powder diffuses everything out anyway. Um, and I like my blush. I like to look blushed, okay? Don't get pressed. Because if it's too much for you, 
all you have to do, just don't do it. Okay, there we go. Cream products are on. You noticed I tapped everything. Like everything I ended up like tapping into the skin. Don't do any crazy swishing and swooshing. That could potentially risk moving the products underneath because remember this is sort of in like thin layers. Last thing we want is to do that and everything kind of like clump up and go patchy, particularly because these are wet. Tap, 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 tap. Cool. Powder is the part that people always say to me, Jordan, how do you use so much powder on your skin yet make it not look like cakey or powdery. Always remember, I'm using makeup, right? Makeup will look like makeup because I do it so full coverage. It's all about layers and building things up um, and just like techniques, right? And remember like makeup can look, like putting this much on can look nice. It doesn't have to look heavy. We can make everything look smooth. So let me show you how, how I do that well how I like to set my skin. This isn't gonna be for everybody, but this is what I do. My thing with powder is each powder does a different thing, which is why I use so many in different places. Powder, I feel like there is like a little bit of a technique. I'll talk you through. The first powder I like to take is my Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Cake Powder. It's a pink tone powder, pink underneath the eyes, delish. Pink equals brightening. And also if you like quite blushed skin like I do, it really like buffs everything together. Just tap some into the lid. Two ways I like to apply it. Um, and there's one way I would recommend over the other, depending on your skin type. My Trigwell Cosmetics Powder Puff. The Powder Puff um, is gonna, it's, it's for a really heavy duty finish. If you don't like a heavy under eye or like a heavy baked skin look, you're probably not gonna love this. If you have dry skin, I wouldn't do this. The other method is with a damp sponge. So this is my small damp sponge. The moisture from the sponge helps melt the powder into the skin. Um, and it's because obviously it's not like wet, like it's not, it's just damp. It's just a touch wet. It's not gonna mess up uh, the powder or anything like that. All that it will do is just like melt it into the concealer. And this at the moment I think is my favorite way. If you have dry skin, maybe give this method a go. I mean, I have oilier skin and I still love this method. I need to zoom you in for this part so you can really see the difference. Powder. Just press, go down the sides of the nose, underneath the eye, over here, and like all the way back. Do we see how smooth the application is? Like this is the way, if you want your powder to look like a velvety matte finish, I love matte skin, personally. It's smoothing, it doesn't look dry, it doesn't look heavy. I am just gonna place a little bit down the sides of my nose and let that chill. The difference between this eye to this eye is crazy like look how smoothed out the pores or like any texture is as well so you can see it happen in real time let me press it in just look how smooth that is the huda beauty powder though is so 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 smoothing 100 percent is one of my favorite powders ever because it's just it's like finely milled so it doesn't look heavy but it does like make the skin last and it just makes everything look so smooth where this is pink toned i only like this sort of like underneath the eye then i'm gonna switch over to my beloved laura mercier translucent setting powder i didn't use this for a while because i was just like playing around with powders i come back to this and when i tell you why did i stop this one's the anniversary edition by the way which is why it's in this like really really cute um packaging and it's huge Switching over to my powder puff. If you have dry skin, just like I said, think about things. You probably don't need to even set your face. You might just wanna set the under eye with like the creasing on the concealer. For me, powder is my favorite thing to keep the skin in place. So powder puff, pick it up, tap that, like the excess off, press in the T-zone and set everywhere. The places I've cream contoured, I don't set. I literally just stick to um, like the T-zone and this underneath part here. And now I'm actually just using the sponge, like the side of it to just like carve this out. The reason I don't like to set the bronzer and the cream blush and stuff is because I'm gonna go in with powder bronzer and stuff anyway. You can go over it with this, it's not the end of the world. I used to do it all the time. Um, but I've noticed that the pigment wasn't picked up as well as when I don't set it. As you can imagine, when you've got like a veil of translucent powder on, you're blending your bronzer and that on top of powder, so it's gonna be more diffused. When you just apply it directly on top of here, you'll notice it will, um, it will just stick better and be like more pigmented. See how smooth in that Laura Mercier powder is as well? Oh, so good. This next step I think is a step that people are like, how are you getting away with that much powder? I like to take a foundation powder at this point, right? This is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. Now the difference between me using this powder and the other powders is I like to take a big fluffy brush. This is gonna be a lighter application because obviously it's like a fluffy powder brush. Like I'm not like packing it onto the skin. By the way, this is in shade 250. Tap it on. This is with my Hourglass Dub Blended Brush. I tap over the top of anywhere that I've pretty much just left 
the powder. Blending on top of everything. By doing this, I'm like getting rid of the line, but where this has a slight bit of color to it, it's not leaving a harsh line, it's just way more softer. And obviously this is a powder foundation, so you're gonna get a little bit more coverage, a little bit more color. I sometimes like to veil it over the top of what I've already done. Flip the brush to the smaller end. Do down the middle of the nose with this. Whatever's left, I'll just dust off down the sides of the nose too. See how like velvety and like matte the skin is? That's my fave. <laughs> the powders have left like a velvety finish. That's the only way I can sort of do like a soft focus velvety finish. I apply them more generously where I need the powder, but then the last steps are more of like, just like veiling, veiling it over. This step is a bit excessive, right? And it's only if you like a bright under eye, if not, don't need to do this. Elf Camo Foundation Powder, which by the way, I've said that this is almost like a good alternative for the Fenty um, powder foundation I just used. If you don't want to splurge on that, this one's a cool alternative. This is in the shade Fair 120N, as you can see, super, super bright. In with my damp sponge, and I'm just picking up a little bit. By the way, this is so pigmented, so just be careful. I use this underneath the eye to add the brightness back. I'm gonna start to press it in so you can see. Where this is a powder foundation, it's gonna add a little bit more coverage, which underneath the eye, I'm not mad at. Work in small sections though, guys, like, and build this up, because like I said, this is pigmented. You don't wanna go in with too much too quickly. I'm also leaving a bit down the sides of the nose, just to sort of add to that nose contour a little bit more, like snatch it in a little bit more. And it helps to like balance out the under eye as well. And I kind of pop it right here on the center of the face and then start to bring it back slightly as well. You see that difference? Where I've used so little, it doesn't look like I've added more, but it just enhances it. Tap in, that's literally all you're gonna need. Like you can see how pigmented that is. What I will say is if you don't like a heavier under eye, don't, don't do this. My under eye can take it and my skin can take it because it is oilier and I really am using a small amount. That's the key. Some of you might be thinking, why don't you just use this over your cherry blossom? Like, why have you got to use both? The reason being is because this is so light and so pigmented, if you applied that onto wet skin, it's going to grip and it's going to be like intense. The powder you put on top of the cream is going to be the most intense, right? Whereas because I already had this down, this is actually sitting on top of this powder. This powder is diffusing this out and then that one's on top of the cream. Does that make sense? It's like a little sandwich. Bronzer now, I'm gonna be using my Jordana Tisha Bronzer Duo. Just the powder side, of course. So I always like to make sure that this formula is matte. Bronzer that has glow in, unless like it's on holiday and it's just like a bit different, I don't know. Makeup has no rules, so whatever. You could have dry skin and you might prefer it. But I find that bronzer, with when it's glowy, is easy to look muddy. The reflective particles in it making it look glowy can almost just like catch the light in weird bits and make it look kind of muddy, I find anyway. Matte formulas are my favorite, and then I'm gonna take this Real Techniques brush. This is the blush brush, but I love this for bronzer. Really get that on there. <laughs> Over the top of where, basically where I put the cream um, bronzer. See that, see that come into life? Kind of start by tapping, just to get that product on there. And then once I've sort of set that cream in place a little bit, then I feel like I can go in and just diffuse the edges. Powder blush now. Again, I'm gonna stick to a matte formula. That's just what I've been loving at the moment. One of my favorites at the moment is by P. Louise. Um, it's this shade here, which is Keep It Candy. That baby pink I love. This is one of like her singles that you can create uh, like a palette with. I'm actually gonna take a small brush like this. Like a small, fluffy, but dense, packed brush. This one's by Box Beautiful. It's the BB5 brush. The reason why I like to use it smaller is obviously I can see where the cream blush is already. So like I know where to go. I've got like the mapping. This is a bit more dense and compact. So when I get the product on there, I can really just focus this exactly where I want it to be without going too far too crazy because I mean, I don't need to. Right on the top of this cheekbone, I'm just gonna press a little bit more. Sometimes as well, I'll like do this and then like dab a little bit in that darker pink. What color is that? This is uh, Misbehaved Magenta. A little bit more intense, but it still has like the same sort of cool toned pink. So you see how I've got that, but it's obviously not blended yet. That's what we want. Like I just want to sort of pack on that color in the area right now. Wipe off the brush now. And I'm just gonna, with a light pressure, like hold the end of the brush. Just start to buff out the edges, but not too far. Like I don't want to cover up that bronzer. I just want to make sure it's blended into the skin. All the way onto the cheekbone. Cheekbone? Apple of the cheek. <laughs> See the difference between blended and unblended? Really, really light pressure, circular motions. 
right around the edges. Quick flip over to the brush I use for the powder foundation or just powder or whatever. And that will blend it out even more for you. Highlighter is only something I like a little bit of. Um, and this one's actually one of my favorites. This is by Primark. This is their face and body gloss. The reason I like this is because it's almost just like a wet, like it's literally a gloss for the skin. There's no glitter or anything like that. It just adds that wetness really, really quickly to the skin, which is what I like. I wouldn't put this on my nose though. If I wanted to add highlight to my nose, I'd use a powder, but I love this for like the cheekbones and a little bit on the forehead, you know the drill. I like to scoop some out personally, and then I'm just gonna put it on the back of my hand. Take my damp sponge and like the butt of it, tap it into the product and just start to pick it up. Give it a squeeze and just hit the top of the cheekbone right here just in this area and you see that it's nice it's like not too much but it's enough that way when i turn my head it just will catch the light a little bit that glow so it doesn't look so matte the skin it almost is kind of uh trying to hide the fact that we use so many powders because we're like oh our skin's still glowy you know but it's gonna hold up and last whatever's left on the sponge i'm just gonna hit just above the brows here as well just to give it like a slight sheen this is the bulk of it guys there's a couple more finishing touches i like to do but in terms of the powders and everything like that we're on the skin i think it looks great <laughs> these are my last sort of like finishing touches first thing is the cheat way for nose contour so obviously we've already done the shape and the colors there see how the colors on the tip of the nose we've still got a bit of like defined lines here but there's color on the nose lighter down the sides it's just looking skinnier and better, in my opinion. <laughs> this is the NYX Jumbo Eye Crayon in Milk. This, you'll see this transform in like two seconds. One thing I will say is some people say that when they use this product, it starts to separate and break up their makeup. Another option of what you could do, warm up some of it on your hands, take a small sort of like angled brush, right? Pick up that product and you could tap it on like this and then just use your finger. And you see how it's just starting to build it up. It takes a little bit longer, but that way you're applying it in small amounts. This is what I like to do down the sides with the brush I used for my nose. Done. I always use my finger to blend it out though because the warmth from my finger will warm, warm up the product to make it blend easier. You can see it hasn't separated anything on my nose. It's just easy. Maybe as well try warming up the product first like this. Get rid of that hard layer and then that's like a warmed up pencil that, ready to use. Could even as well because this is matte. This is like basically highlighting the nose with something matte. You could even just on the tip. How cute. To finish the skin, I like to add in my little moles as well. So the one thing I need to do straight away, there's a blemish here, turn that into a spot. And then I just tap over the top with my finger to diffuse it out. By the way, that was the misguided uh, brow marker in dark brown. And that's it guys, that is the skin complete. Obviously the last thing to do is setting spray. If you want the ultimate finish, use two types of sprays, right? So a finishing spray, and a, and a fixing spray. The finishing spray is gonna help to melt all the powders into the skin. That's something like a MAC Fix Plus. Dewier, the moisture from that will melt all the products in. I mean, look, let me, let me zoom you in so you can see my skin. Using a finishing spray will just melt everything together. And then go in with a fixing spray, something that's really gonna help with long lasting and sealing everything in, like the Milk Hydra Grip, like Urban Decay All Nighter, that type of thing. Today, I don't really feel like my skin needs a uh, finishing spray, so I'm gonna go straight in with this. See how I've got the skin wet? Just let that dry. Also make sure you proper shake that up because you'll, you'll notice it will separate. Give it a good uh, mix. If I'm going out out and I know I'm gonna be sweaty and things like that, I'll even go in with like another layer in like five, 10 minutes. Same again, or I'll take my Urban Decay All Nighter. That's another favorite of mine and just really layer it up. Yeah, this is my favorite product like list for my skin at the moment. This is what I found holds up the best, looks the best. The combination of products with the combination of like the application and stuff, hands down my favorite base products at the moment. Like you just need them. Full coverage makeup routine complete. This is it. I just went off camera and just did my eyes and lips so I didn't look so crazy. My favorite, 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 favorite base routine at the moment. I really, really hope this was helpful and I hope the things that I spoke about in today's video help you with your base routine. Maybe help the way it looks or the way to apply it and just make things a little bit easier for you. I'm sure you guys have fucking sick makeup anyway, but this is just, this is my two pence. <laughs> I love you and I'll see you soon.